Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Nick here at 45 Degrees Sailing. Now, today we're gonna to do a video that's been requested by a bunch of you on the channel. Thank you so much for your comments and your support. And this is going to be anchoring with stern lines to shore. Now this maneuver can be a little bit intimidating, especially when there's rocks all around or if there's other yachts in the area. Uh, and I would 100% suggest practicing it like this. Um, this example we're gonna give where there are no boats around and you can do this. Now a big part of um, the reason we do this while we're out on the water is because Croatia especially is quite deep. Now that meaning it's quite deep close to the shore. So unless you've got 100 meters of anchor chain, which a lot of charter boats do not, a lot of owner boats will have 100 meters of anchor chain, a lot of charter boats are sitting around 40 to 60 at the most, um, then you can't necessarily anchor in very deep bays, very solid. So in order to anchor securely, we want to anchor with our anchor down into the deep, but then laying up the slope of the uh, of the seabed so that it has a really good pull on the angle of the upward slope and that way your anchor will dig in nicely. The other reason we also like to do it here at 45 degree sailing is that when you are in the middle of a bay and you put your anchor down and then the wind shift, you swing around like this and you create this big drag with your anchor chain. So any sea life that's down there, anything that's trying to grow on the seabed while that anchor chain is, is turning around it just gets a bit destroyed. So when you lay an anchor and then run a stern line to the shore, you put your anchor down, you pull back to the shore, and your amount of movement is reduced to this small amount of swing left and right with the with the uh, wind or whatever's pulling you there. So holding tight like that does a lot less damage to the seabed. Now I haven't got my 45 degrees shirts printed this year. I need to do more of that. So I really need to just get a, a label. That's better. All right, let's dive into this video. So um, here we are, I'm just first setting up, obviously I've got the, putting the drone up so we can film this for you. Um, but effectively we've come into this bay, there's one other boat. Um, we, generally I'm gonna try and pick a location that is, um, is with the, with the wind coming over my stern when I'm finished. That's the ideal, because then you put all the weight on your stern lines, but not on your, um, on your anchor as much, which means you're, you're relying on the trees or the rocks or whatever it is you're pulled on, which is great because you're not pulling against your anchor. A crosswind is fine as long as it's not too heavy. A heavy crosswind on an anchored stern too, this is just a bit of a nightmare. So um, uh, this is morning, this is a common, common thing for this spot and actually the wind was due to turn so I was okay with this one here. But just always be mindful of what spot you're picking. So we've come into this bay and you'll see right now, if I start that again, is Mahina has just come to the port quarter and she's picking up the dinghy painter. Now the dinghy painter, uh, this is really important that you reduce the amount of things that can go wrong whenever you're doing a maneuver, docking, refueling, all of this sort of stuff. So she's gonna bring that up to midships, to the midships cleat. And if you don't have a midships cleat, you can put this uh, either on the bow cleat or just tie it to the stanchion on midships or the tow rail. Because you, um, what you don't wanna be worrying about is whether or not there is a, um, is a line that's gonna catch into your prop or anything like that. When it's at midships tied like this, if we go in reverse, the dinghy will just float forward and rest against the boat. If we go in a stern, it'll just um, float back. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry, forward, all of that. So now that we're tied at midships, mine is going back to the bow. Uh, so we always want someone on our bow control with the anchor up there and someone at the helm, of course. Now I've already got the swim platform down because I know that I'm gonna be going for a stern line. So everything is ready. Now, oh, excuse me. The other thing that we do is we have our stern line, actually, this is something I'm gonna patent at some point, but I put it in a bag, a big like garden leaf bag or something like this, and I run it down um, in like a snake, snake sort of thing, like a, like a ski rope, uh, a water skiing rope into a barrel, like that, so that it's not gonna, it's not gonna, um, catch as it goes out. Now, uh, if you do nice, beautiful coils and then lay them out nicely on deck, often one of those loops is gonna catch through the other loops and you're gonna have a tangle. Whereas this way, effectively, I don't think I've ever had a tangle, it'll just run straight out and, and go to the shore with you and you can have the person watching that line to make sure that uh, it's not catching on anything or however it goes. And the bitter end of that, uh, the yacht end of that, is tied to something strong so that you don't lose it all altogether. 
All right, so we come in here and I'm just going with the wind at the moment and I'm picking my spot and I'm about to do my turn up so I can orientate the boat with the wind. So let's just get this right now and put, uh, this is the wind here and it's going in this direction. Um, and so we're coming across the wind now. So I'm setting myself actually up further, further upwind than I need to be knowing that I'm gonna drift. Along with that, I'm going to stop the boat orientated um, as far as my reverse goes, orientated further up uh, upwind than actually I want to end. So when I drop my anchor and, and go backwards, I'm gonna reverse upwind of where I wanna be knowing that I'm going to drift downwind before the line gets put on. So right now, uh, Mahin is about to drop the anchor. Um, so I've given her the, the depth. Uh, so we know, right, we're in 15 meters uh, right now. So I'm saying, right, I want 15 meters down to get it on the ground. So she starts lowering that down and she's going straight down to that. I'm currently actually still moving forward just slightly, but I've, I've just gone into reverse and, get, and starting to get my line set up. Now, you can do this with or without bow thrusters. Uh, you know, you, you're gonna use what you've got. I've got bow thrusters on this boat, so I use them because it, it's easy. Uh, it's, it's there, but you don't need them in order to do this maneuver. But we'll talk about how I use them during this so that uh, it, it helps me out the best. So now we've got our 15 meters down or whatever it, whatever the depth I asked for, and I'm starting to move backwards now. Anchor train is still vertically down. You can see I'm moving backwards because the dinghy has come forward and it's laying against the bow of the boat um, with the reverse movement. So I'm just now telling, so Mahin has told me I've got, I've got my depth down that I wanted, and I'm now moving backwards towards the shore, and I'm laying chain along the seabed. So I'm just asking her to keep paying out, and I'm saying five more meters, go to 25 meters, go to 30 meters. Now, you can see I'm angled back towards where I wanna be, and the reverse is going that way. I've also just done a small bow thrust there just to straighten. I think I overcompensated uh, with how far I needed to go. And I don't have a lot of steerage in reverse here because I'm going quite slow. All right, you can see the, the wind on the flag is just on our port quarter now, so it has come around a little bit. But we keep going back. Now the anchor's started to grab, and it's, and it's coming up the slope of the seabed, so it's gonna get good holding there. And the, the angle's just moving forward a little bit. Now, I don't wanna pull on that too soon because without a good amount of chain on the seabed, we're not gonna get a good holding. So I just tell her to keep paying out, keep paying out. Now, I'll look for the hand signal, but I think right about now, I've told her to stop. Okay, so stop paying out. She's told me I've got 30 meters out or whatever, whatever that length is. I've just bow thrusted my bow to starboard, so thrust to port, move the bow to starboard to turn the stern more into the wind to give me a bit better direction. And now the anchor chain is starting to come up, okay? So I'm pulling against that chain and I'm feeling um, how much pressure is on it, whether it's holding. And I can tell it's starting to hold there because my whole boat's starting to rotate, uh, or the stern is starting to rotate around within the line of that anchor. So now we're at this point where I'm holding I'm asking her if it's good. She's saying it's holding. Okay, we've got a really good angle on there and I'm holding in reverse. I'm still in reverse at this stage. Now, I understand this is very close to the shore. I do not expect you to practice this maneuver by getting this close to the shore. I know these depths very well. I sail into this bay once every two weeks. Quite often I've swam the whole thing so I know how deep it is and I know what the holding's like. If you're testing this out in the beginning, all right, you just wanna, just wanna chill out and, um, and start out deeper or start a longer, uh, longer system. Okay, so let's pause right there. So now the main stretch has already happened on the chain. The angle is reduced. It's, it's gonna spring back. The momentum has gone from the reversing onto the chain. It's springing back a little bit and we're now just at a holding position. I've called Mahine to come back to the stern. So I want her to take the helm, which is minding the, the, the gear, the power, the thrusters and the line, and I'm getting ready to dive in and go to shore. So uh, I've waited for her to come back to the stern to get into the position of the controls so that if she needs to adjust anything, uh, this, this can happen. Now, if you've got another crew member and you as the skipper, you might just be able to stay on the helm. Um, stay on the helm and send someone else to shore. Remember, you don't have to swim this. We do this in the winter as well. This could be done with the tender. It could be done on a paddleboard. It could be whatever. 
So at this point, I say we clear, I've got the end of the line and I'm diving into the water and it's Croatia and it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> um, it is really, really quite lovely doing, doing this job sometimes. Um, okay, so um, that's me. I've got to the shore there, being very careful of my feet. Now, slight disclaimer. I do do this in bare feet, I know this area, and my feet at this stage of the season are very tough. I also open my eyes underwater, okay, and I have no problem doing that. Um, please be careful, wear a mask and goggles, or you know, you're wearing rock shoes or something when you go into the shore to do this, especially in Croatia, because the rocks are very sharp, and there is kina or sea urchin on the seabed that you don't want to stand on. I've done that, we'll tell that story another time. So now I'm getting out, I've got my tail into the rope, and I'm gonna tie the rope around and back onto this, um, often with a bowline, but it depends on what I'm planning. I'm going to do a bowline here, and I've jumped back into the water with the tail end so that I can tie a long bowline, meaning I will not have to get out of the water to untie that line. All right, so I've tied that line, and I'm now swimming back towards the boat. Now, right now, Mahina has gone and taken a standing part of the line, and she's taken it up to the aft starboard cleat. And she's going to get a turn around that and start pulling in the slack. We're still reversing against that anchor chain, so we've got tension there. And she's going to pull in the slack so that we can get that secured off and then go to neutral. So I'm swimming back, I'm swimming back. There we are. And I remember this day because she, she gave me the okay. And I come to the swim platform, up onto there. Um, and then we're at a point where I, the line is coming up now. She's pulled the tension on. And when is the moment we go to neutral? That'll be about now. So now we've just gone to neutral. Tension is coming up on that stern line and the boat is gonna drift forward a little bit, but because we tension it quite tight, it's gonna sit in this position. And there we are, we're basically done. So now we're in neutral. We've got tension on our stern line. We've got tension on our anchor chain as well, because in this particular situation, I wanna sit right here right in this spot uh, because it's lovely swimming off the back and it's beautiful beautiful to see and everything like that if you are doing this for overnight if you're doing this for expecting a lot of winds coming from a stern anything like that i would not suggest being this close to the shore all right you're going to want to give yourself a bit more space and effectively let out m most depending if you've got 50 60 meters of chain i'd be wanting all of that out so you start deeper and lay it back further so you've got more play in that line um, and that if the wind comes up and things shift you can either ease your stern lines and go out further uh, bring in a little bit of anchor chain or you can ease out more anchor chain and pull in your stern lines but me staying here for an hour for swimming or an hour and a half on a calm day i don't need all that so it's it's all good now i've just said cool we're all done back here mine is going back to the bow i said check the anchor she's putting away the anchor control and we are we are done. Engine's getting turned off, and I think the engine's off now. So that is us anchored stern to at that point. Now, one thing I've seen people do which does not work. If you're reversing back and you, you don't check that your anchor is really nice and tight before you put your stern line in and all of this, and then you put your stern line on and you're like, oh, I'm, I think it's drifting. And, and we're getting too close to the shore. And I've seen people just pull the anchor up more to make it tighter. This, this, is, you, you, this, this doesn't work, okay? Because one, you're tied to the shore um, and you're not gonna pull the boat forward against your stern line if your anchor is not rock solid, okay? You're just gonna pull your anchor towards you. If it's already slipping through the, um, already slipping through the mud or th along the seabed, Pulling up more of it is not going to help. What you need is more out. And you can't drop more out because you'll drift backwards. So you've got to forget your stern line, well, retrieve it. You've got to pick your anchor up, go out further, drop again, and get that set. And sometimes it doesn't all go like this. It's not all rosy. You're going to have to possibly set two or three times, depending on what the holding is like in that area. So that's us laying there. We've got nice angle. We're stationary in one place and it's all looking good and you can just sit and enjoy and swim. So uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to get Mahina here because I want to get her opinion from the person that does the anchor and communication and stuff like that. And I want to ask her a couple of questions and see if she's got more information that can help your crew or you uh, with this maneuver. We'll go get her.
All right, now I lent out one of my microphones to one of our top fans, Michael Frias, so we're going to have to share this microphone. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, as I was just talking about, Mahina's on the bow there, and I wanted to get from her, what is the most important thing for you as regards to communication um, between us when you're on the bow? I like to know how deep it is. Because it gives me an idea when I'm up on the bow, how much chain I'm going to be putting out. All right, so on the approach, how deep is it? Do you worry about the wind on the approach? No. All right, that's me worrying about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching your face because I, you can say to me, put down five, put down ten, put down another five, put down another ten. But then you can also change your mind in the middle of it. So instead of just focusing on the anchor, I always have to keep looking back to you to make sure if you're telling me to stop if you're telling me to yes then I need to make sure I'm ready to do that but what I also do while I'm talking to you about the angle I'm also I've got my foot on the chain because I'm feeling to see when it takes hold if it's still I'll do this to Nick as well which means it's paying out it's bumping along the bottom and it's paying out yeah, that could mean it could mean two things. So if that's um, before we've gained any tension on the chain, and she's doing this, it's, I'm, I'm getting that that means it's paying out. But once we've grabbed um, tension on the chain and the angles come up, if she's doing this, that means I would generally do this. Yeah, it's probably dragging. Okay, so the anchor's skipping along the seabed. But you're looking at the angle as well. If the mm. angles coming up out of the water quite a bit if it's quite shallow if the angle's quite shallow because it's holding and we're in reverse at the moment pulling against it and i can't feel anything through my foot on the anchor chain then i'll tell nick that it feels good yeah and that's that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for how it feels back at my end i'm looking sideways for a transit to make sure we're not slipping backwards and i'm looking for mahina to tell me that it feels nice and solid because we're in reverse and we're quite close to the shore in this case because we like being close to the shore so this point always needs to be someone at the helm at the controls because even after it's set it could still let go so when i say your helm you're coming back um and you're going to get back to the helm before she uh, before I jump in the water, I want her at the controls um, and we just make sure we've got a, a communication between us that it's all good. She's she's all good. I say your helm. She says my helm. Generally, when you give me the helm, you'll tell me the bow thrusters are down. Mm -hmm. um, you'll generally get me to thrust a little bit depending on what our position is mm -hmm. just so that I know that they're working. And I often call this out from the water. If I've jumped into the water and I'm I'm on the land or halfway and I see a bit more drift from my position, I might say bow thrust, starboard or bow thrust, port. Mm. And that will do this rotation we talked about earlier. When I'm in the water, what do you need from me? Because you're now at the helm. Uh, and Mahin is a qualified skipper and she's very good at this, but she doesn't like doing that job. That's not her job. She doesn't want to drive the boat around. So what are you looking at from me? Because I'm now preoccupied with my job, swimming to shore or rowing to shore. I always swim. Um, what is it you're looking to from the skipper um, to make sure everything's still good? Well, I watch you when you swim mm. because I want to make sure, A, that the line's feeding out. That's a very good point. She's watching the line feed out from the back. I'm also making sure that the line is actually feeding out and hasn't just dumped a whole bunch of line into the water. Mm -hmm. It's I, I don't know exactly. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know where you're looking at to to tie up the lines. So ah, yes. I'm watching where you're going because wherever you're going, that affects what I'm then doing at the helm with the thrusters mm. um, and whether I need to panic or not because you've gone way over there and I'm way over here. Yeah. Because sometimes by the time you get to the land, you're like, oh, actually, what we originally planned to do probably isn't going to work. I'm just going to adjust a bit and I've got to watch you because you can't communicate that with me. I have to watch and figure that out by myself. Yeah, very, very fair call. Okay, so I like that. <laughs> Mahina watches when I'm, I've secured the line because I'm tying the end to this point on the land or I'm going around something and bring it back. Most often we just tie it there because it's quite a way away and you need a very long line for that. Um, and once she's uh, once I tie that off, she's grabbing the, the standing part of the line, mm -hmm. taking it to the cleat, and then securing it there. I often stand and watch just for a moment, um, unless I'm swimming straight back to see if I can watch the angles and that's all good. Um, other than that, it's pretty much set at that point. I swim back. The next thing that's really important with communication, the boat is currently in gear. If someone is swimming to the back of the boat and the engine is running, 
neutral or if it's running at all. You, you don't know if it's neutral or not, so... Exactly. You, yeah, yeah, you don't know if it's neutral. So you wait until the person at the helm there gives you the okay to swim to the back of the boat. Now, I know the prop is quite a long way from the swim platform. Don't care. It's, it's what we also teach our guests, that if you're swimming back to the boats, do not approach the swim platform until you've had the okay for whoever is at the helm. Whether it's me, which it sometimes is, or whether it's in most cases you, mm. you never just swim up to the swim platform while the boat is while the engine is on oh, without yeah. getting an okay with it, whether it's a, a hand signal and direct eye contact or whether it's actually a verbal signal that's up to you to figure out with your guests yeah. or your partner um but you need some sort of confirmation you don't just go and jump on the swim platform yeah you need a cue on that definitely and i'm realizing now she says it yeah i always look at her and i and i either say hey neutral i do this and say are you neutral she goes checks it and then confirms it verbally with me. But we have very practiced cues. So they're cues that not everyone necessarily picks up yeah. because even though we're pausing and making eye contact and doing hand signals, they're very quick because yeah. we've done them a lot and we do them a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. Well, um, thank you very much for joining in on this commentary for the Anchoring Stern 2 of the Lines. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please remember, drop your comments below, uh, like the video, and subscribe to the channel, blah, 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 YouTube, 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 etc., 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 algorithm. Um, but I'm really enjoying all the comments, so um, please drop the questions in there. Uh, they've been very encouraging and helpful. So thanks a lot, and see you in the next video. Thank you, Martin.